In this video, I tell you how to assess the risk of material misstatement at the assertion level. Now, we have laid the groundwork to get to this stage for several videos, and in the last two videos, we looked at inherent risk and control risk. Now we're going to bring those two elements together to determine what the risk of material misstatement is at the assertion level. So I'm going to give you some examples in this video of how to determine that final risk of material misstatement. And we're going to take a look at the receivables and revenues area as an example. So let's go to chapter 17, risk of material misstatements. In prior videos, we've looked at uh, retrospective reviews of estimates. We've done our walkthroughs of the internal controls. We've done preliminary analytics. We've asked our questions about whether or not fraud is present. We've done several things in risk assessment to get to a point where we could assess the inherent risk and control risk and then those two elements make up the risk of material misstatement. So you've seen the equation inherent risk times control risk equals the risk of material misstatement. Now think about the receivables and revenues area as we have a short discussion and I give some illustrations about assertions in that transaction cycle. So think about receivables with me for a moment. And let's say, let's look at the existence assertion. And let's say the inherent risk for that assertion is high. Suppose that in this transaction cycle, there's a high volume of activity. Maybe the ASC 606 uh, criteria in GAP for revenue recognition and receivables, maybe it's complex and quite often it is. So we're going to assess the inherent risk for the existence assertion at high. And then our control risk, let's say it's also high. Now, when you have a high inherent risk and a high control risk, guess what the risk of material misstatement is? Yes, it's high. That's easy. It's when the one of those elements is, is different from the other one that it gets a little more complicated. So if you have a low inherent risk and a high control risk, is the risk of material misstatement what, what we refer to as the RMM. Is the RMM moderate, or is it low, or is it high? What is it? Let's look at another example here in this transaction area. Think about the valuation assertion, and let's say this estimate of the allowance for uncollectibles is complex and very subjective. So when you look at the valuation assertion, the inherent risk is going to be high. And so you've got high inherent risk, high control risk, and high RMM. Now think about another client, and you probably have some like this, where they hardly ever write off any bad debt. So when you look at the allowance for uncollectibles, or the valuation assertion, it's not complex. There's not much to do. So your inherent risk for the valuation assertion in that example could very, very well be low. Definitely wouldn't be any more than moderate. So let's say it's low. You got a low inherent risk for valuation, high control risk, and our RMM, What's, what is it? Is it low, moderate, or high? Oftentimes, I will use the lower of the two elements. So if you did that, you'd have low, in, low inherent risk, high control risk. You'd have a low RMM. But that depends on, on how much risk do you have. So 
in this example, we, we're saying the control risk is high. Let's say that the controls are really shoddy. Uh, there's no segregation of duties. Then your control risk is not only high, it's real high. And if that's the case, when you combine that high control risk with the low inherent risk, then you you really need to be at moderate at least, if not high. So, it, you know, I can't give you an equation and say that you would always use the lower of the two, but often I do. But again, you got to think about all the risk um, elements here and make a final decision on RMM. Oftentimes, if I have a moderate inherent risk and a high control risk, I will go to a moderate RMM. But again, it depends on the overall risk profile for that assertion. I know I said this a minute ago, but I just want to show on screen the equation inherent risk times control risk is equal to your risk of material misstatement. Uh, you know, if you used a point scale, say, of 1 to 10 for inherent risk and control risk, it really would make this RMM determination easier. Most firms will use high, moderate, or low. Because there's only three levels, it makes the RMM determination somewhat more difficult. But if you used a 10-point scale, and you can, by the way, it would make it easier to determine what your final RMM is. When you assess the risk of material misstatement, you need to do so at the assertion level, as you see here, but also at the financial statement level. So for management override, that's a given. You're going to have that risk at the financial statement level. That risk is very pervasive. It affects really every account, every disclosure. Uh, but you need to assess the financial statement level risk of material misstatement and then the RMMs at the assertion levels. And you're going to do it at the assertion levels for those relevant assertions. See the earlier video for an explanation of what that is. But you need to assess the risk of material misstatement for the financial statement level and at the assertion level. So you've done all the hard work and now you uh, go into your risk of material misstatement form you're going to assess risk for each of those relevant assertions. You're going to do that, say, in cash, receivable slash revenues for uh, fixed assets, for accounts payable, for all of your significant accounts and transaction cycles and disclosures. You need to assess the risk of material misstatement for those and, of course, we just said you need to do it at the financial statement level as well. Once you get this risk material misstatement documented in cash, receivables, etc., well, now you're ready for linkage. You're ready to connect the risk assessment to the actual audit procedures that you're going to plan. The next few videos, I'm going to talk about tested details, substantive analytics, and also the test of controls. Those are the three responses to the risk of material misstatement. I'm going to tell you how to decide which of those is best given your risk of material misstatements. So stay with us. Till then, take care. Have a great day. Bye now.